Hmm. Thank you so much, Unity, for having me here. Today we are talking about how all is happening for you. It's funny because I realize that right now in my life, I am definitely going through much of a transform trans transformation. You know, the experience of who I thought I was is constantly being challenged, constantly being remixed, if you will. I know that remix term is, is definitely a term for my generation, the hip hop generation. The, me, the remix is a beautiful thing because what the remix was, you fall in love with a song. You have nostalgia from the song. Maybe it makes you think of a moment you shared with someone. Maybe it th makes you think of a time in your life. You love the song. And right when you think the song can be no better, someone yells, remix. And you get a brand new song, even though it's the same song. Maybe it's featuring more of your favorite artists on it. Maybe it's a brand new beat. Maybe it just comes with a different video, who knows? But we always, for my generation, would anticipate the remix. I realize that oftentimes in life, what we, what we thought was our life, what we thought was the way we thought, just all these things can one day be the complete opposite of what we thought life was supposed to be. Ever feel that way? I am not at all a tough guy in any way. Not at all. Which is why I find myself fascinated by tough guys. Because <laughs> I'm not one. So one thing I've noticed about tough guys, especially when, when it's like something, like, I don't know, a boxing match. There's always that moment where the two tough guys get to stare each other in the eyes, right? See who's going to flinch first. See, see who's going to cower. It's always fascinating to me because it's like, oh, wow, I would never want to be in that situation. These guys look scary. <laughs> I've learned over times that often what that is, this is the moment for these two men to show their pain, to show what they've been through. Look in my eyes, brother. Look at the pain I've been through. We've all been through pain. We've all been through challenging time. We've all been through that. And let's just be honest, okay? We all get to have our moment where we get to be challenged by something. It may be in the form of another human being. It may be in the form of a, of a boss who gets on our nerves or, or a neighbor who's too nosy or a partner who's not loving us the way we would like. We may think that's what it is, but what we are really facing is the opportunity to step into our own greatness. Please understand that what I'm saying today is not a lesson for you. It's a lesson I need to hear. I'm just too afraid to speak to myself. So I need y'all here so that when I talk, I can hear the lesson I need to hear. Just please understand, if it resonates with you, that makes sense. We're all the same tribe anyway. But just know, these are my assignments. I'm not preaching it anyway. I like when things stay the way I'm used to. I really like that. I like when things stay normal. I like when I can predict everything that's going on. But in my 42 years of life, I finally have accepted. It has taken 42 years. Nothing stays the same. We fear change. It's natural. But we as metaphysicians know that God is all there is. Oh, we say it. We say it all the time. It's very easy to say when the, when the weather is looking the way we want it to look. But when those clouds roll in, can we say it then? I'm willing to assume we all love flowers, right? I love me some flowers, fresh flowers. Oh my goodness, I just love that. Especially, um, what are my favorites? I love orchids. I love uh, tiger lilies bird of paradise. I love all of those and so many more. Let's not forget that it takes both sunshine and rain to make those flowers bloom. It takes both. We have to love both. 
If we get to say God is all there is, that means even the stuff we do not like. What am I saying here? What am I getting at? Nothing in the universe is happening to you. It can only be happening for you. Even the things that feel like you are being pulled down, even those unfair moments we think about. When our classmate got more graham crackers than we did. When we had our hand up like, teacher, pick me, pick me, pick me, and the other classmate got picked and they said the very thing you were gonna say and they only said it because they heard you whisper it before you put your hand up. Those are unfair moments. Yet they all happened to make us better. I always thought that it was the bullies who I saw waiting for me after school that I was afraid of. That's who I always thought I was afraid of. Then I grew up and remembered this thing in uh, Little League football. You're not even allowed to do this anymore. You would get in so much trouble doing this as a coach. But there was this thing in football called the bullpen. Oh, my goodness. Just saying it makes me uncomfortable. And if you thought you were tough and you showed up to practice acting like you were tough, the coach would be like, I'm going to put you in the bullpen. And what the bullpen was was your teammates would circle you. You didn't know where it was coming from. <laughs> and then your coach would yell your teammate's jersey number and you better be looking at him when it comes. Because if he's from behind you or the side, it doesn't matter. He's coming, he's going to come to knock you over. My first year playing football, I didn't even know what I was doing. I only played because my best friend played. I don't even know if I liked football at that time. I just wanted to do what he was doing. And often I would get put in the bullpen, not because I was acting tough, but because I was too soft. I was too scared. I did not like hitting. And they knew it. And if you want to be on this team, brother, you got to be okay with that. So I was constantly in the bullpen. Did I grow up to be an NFL star? No. Did I even play in high school? No, I did not. What football taught me is we all get to get hit. Oh yeah, we all get hit. You get hit when you wake up and go to that job you don't really like. You get hit when you sit in traffic dealing with that road rage. You get hit from so many angles. Oftentimes it's the ones we love who've been in our hearts the longest, who hit us the most and the hardest. You will get hit. Understand, we are all players in this game of life and everybody gets their turn to get the ball. You will get hit. I'm just here to remind myself that it was the hits in practice, the hits in the game that made me a better player of the game. There is no football without hitting. In life, we get to go toward our greatness, whether we like it or not. I always thought it was the bullies I was afraid of and being in the bullpen. No, I'm realizing that what I fear the most, what we fear the most is our own greatness, our own God self. That's the most frightening thing we'll ever have to face. It's frightening, it's terrifying. I'm looking at a congregation of brilliance right now, I can tell, looking in the eyes of everyone. How many of those amazing ideas did you not go after that you still haven't let go of that's still in your journal somewhere? How many of those ideas that you know would work if you just put a little more sunshine and a little more water on? How many? We all have these ideas. They are so bright, they're so brilliant. They have so much momentum in our consciousness. It's when we put them out into this physical world that that becomes the real challenge. It's nothing more insulting when I know I have a great idea and I gotta convince this person who I know is not going to get it that my idea is great. I, I, why do I gotta convince this person? Are you serious? That's the challenge, that's the bullpen, that's the stare down. Am I allowed? to be like water and take on the form and the shape of whatever it is I am facing in order to get God's work out into the open? Am I willing to do that? Am I willing to put my ego down? Here's what's beautiful about that. We don't really get a choice at times. <laughs> Life will humble us. 
Life will sit us down and say, you get to listen right now. It's not your turn to talk. I never like it when it happens. I've grown up in metaphysics my entire life. This is what I know. And I am telling you still, I get an attitude when God tells me, sit down and hush. I have something for you to learn. I do not like it. But in the end, it always ends up being way more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. If I can just be not stubborn enough, not disciplined enough, okay? We, we gotta take baby steps with me. If I could just be not stubborn enough to listen. Now as metaphysicians, we all love talking about the uh, caterpillar and the butterfly metamorphosis. We love that analogy about life. It's just so easy. A caterpillar goes around crawling around the ground and just one day it has this urge to, to crawl up onto a branch and just, and just fold into itself. I need to take a nap, something feels weird and, and they go into this phase and what we realize is out of itself, it morphs into this cocoon. And there are many things that go on in this cocoon. Studies have said that the caterpillar actually begins to believe it is dying while it is in this cocoon phase. There's a point to where it's just goo, it's not even form, it's just goo. It is completely evaporated and liquefied itself in this cocoon phase. How many times have we felt ourselves in that cocoon phase? The loss of a loved one, some bad news at the doctor, a hard time financially and you find yourself couch surfing and more vulnerable than you ever have been. How many times have you been in the cocoon phase? And here's what's cold about the cocoon phase is gradually the caterpillar begins to take form again. We see the wings of the butterfly forming. We see this new thing taking place. And of course, the loving spirit in us, we want to help. Here, little butterfly, I'll help you, but you can't do that. You can't. In order for the butterfly to develop enough fluid in its wings, it has to push itself out. Oh my goodness. We get to go back to those times we felt abandoned. How come you guys didn't help me? How come no one was there to check on me? How come? How come I was left to fend for myself and so many don't have to, why? Let me remind all of you, excuse me, sorry. Let me remind myself, I, and I'm pretty sure I can assume this about all of us, at some point in my life said, I want to be great. I want to express my greatness. I want to express the life and the allness of God that exists within me out into this physical world. All of us have said it. First of all, you already are great. You can never not be great. Secondly, you're already expressing that greatness, but we know what we mean when we say it. And we said it. Listen, just the moment that you took your first breath was your affirmation by saying, I choose to express my greatness. You already made the pact. I'm sorry, you signed the contract, you did it. We just didn't know what comes with that. We didn't read the small print. <laughs> that means we get to constantly be in God's gym, working on our greatness getting ready for that remix when they call us back on stage and do an entirely different rendition of the song. We get to get in that bullpen over and over again. And guess what? We get to know that it's beautiful. I used to always be jealous of those guys in school who could just walk up and talk to the pretty girls and just say the right thing. That has never been me, okay? I've tried it. I'm not good at it. it it's just stop it, Lucia. No, stick to preaching, all right? You just stick to talking about God. I realize that what I'm looking at when I see those super cool guys, we're really just looking at a guy who got turned down over and over again until he just perfected his art. So are we looking at. 
No one talks about how many times Barry Bonds, Babe Ruth, Mark McGuire, all these great guys struck out. All we talk about are the home runs. No one talks about the, the, the moments in Mother Teresa's life where she felt like she was not, not worthy, when, when she felt like she had imposter syndrome. They've looked at her diaries and they can read parts in there where she was doubting herself. Am I doing the right thing? Am I the right person for this? We all have doubts. Reverend Dorica from East Bay Church says, your dream, your calling is supposed to scare you. It's supposed to frighten you. It's supposed to, that's how great you are. It's supposed to frighten you. Yep, that's you, don't run. That dream you have, that is you. Stop running from it, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Think about what you've been through. I really want you to think, think about what you've been through. The fact that you are still here is because you know your greatness is calling. Why go through all that and still be here? Come on now. Come on now. And as a movie buff, as a huge movie buff, let's just understand, I wanna see the struggle in the movie. That's what I wanna see. That's the best part. It's easy to love the movie and stand up when the credits are rolling. Your favorite movie is, you know, the, the your favorite song from the soundtrack is playing, Eye of the Tiger. You know, that's the best part of Rocky, right? When the credits are playing and they play an Eye of the Tiger. But let's be clear. I want to see the struggle in the star's life. I want to see them overcome something. I want to cry because I can identify with the struggle in the part. Give me that part. I like the ugliness the most. That's the best part. If we're going to say that God is all there is, let's remember that all of it, all of it is good. That argument next door that is just getting on your nerves, can't they be quiet? That loud, obnoxious music that these teenagers wanna play just on the day where I felt I needed sleep, all of it. I heard someone say in meditation once that every sound you hear is part of your meditation. Even the baby crying in the background, even the siren you hear whiz by your, your center. Everything you hear is part of your meditation. Understand that. Nothing in this universe is happening to you. All of it is happening for you. That's how we win. We win by remembering that we're already a winner. We don't like to feel weak. We don't like to appear weak. We don't like that. But let's just remember that we all get to have a novice stage. I don't like that novice stage. I don't like looking like a beginner. I don't. I'll tell you a story that'll let you know just how deep it goes. <laughs> Me, my girlfriend at the time, one of her friends, and a dude who I was, who I, one of the few dudes I felt like I was cooler than in high school also came with us on this, on this trip. We're going from Oakland to Bakersfield. So now we're in Bakersfield. <laughs> I really hope none of them uh, watch this. They're going to laugh at this story. And when we get to the skating rink, I was very insecure because listen, I, I can't roller skate. I just, I'm not good. I will hug that wall for dear life. You guys will laugh at me. I'm not good at roller skating. However, this young man who I used to make fun of in high school was good. He was very good. <laughs> Soon, the entire trip came about how great he was at roller skating. And of course, with that, that's only highlighting how much I was hugging the wall the entire time we were roller skating. That burned me up so bad, I have no desire to roller skate at all. But that experience burned me up so much, I actually was thinking about taking private roller skating lessons so that one day I could show everybody how good I was. Do you understand that? Why can't you just enjoy the fact that you looked like a beginner in that moment? Why do we have to be? experts as soon as we try it. The beautiful journey is from white belt to black belt. That's the journey. That's the beauty. The path itself is the gift. 
Let's not forget that. Let's not act like we don't know that. It is the journey itself. Life is the gift. So let's take everything that goes with it. If I want to know what love feels like, I also am leaving myself open to know what a broken heart feels like. And then after that broken heart, when you fall in love again, it feels that much more great. Now, yes, when you get your heart broken again, that also does not feel good. But then you fall in love again. You see the beautiful cycle. We are always in the cocoon phase of whatever the next phase is. I will repeat that. Whatever comes after this godly experience that we are all experiencing now, we know that life is infinite. This is unity, San Jose. We know that life is infinite. Let's remember that whatever comes after whatever this infinite experience is, that's what we are in the cocoon phase for right now. And everything that's happening right now is only preparing us for whatever the next thing is. <laughs> we are stay, we are constantly in the womb phase. Everything that goes on in this life is only happening for us. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. I remember when I was watching him as just a wrestler. Had no idea he would blow up to start him this much. I didn't even know he could act as well as he did. Then I learned more about his life. How originally he wanted to be a football star and found himself at a time where he realized, wow, it's not gonna happen. Do you know how devastating that is for someone who wants to play football? Trust me, I know. I just knew I was going to win the Heisman. I just, <laughs> I just knew it. And then came the day when I went to the to, to tryouts at high school and saw how good everyone was. I was like, all right, um, maybe I should act. <laughs> but he was good enough to make the high school team, the college team, even be scouted by NFL teams and had a realization where he realized it wasn't going to happen. I know that must have been depressing. I think if we look at what he would have had as an NFL star versus what he has now, I think even he would agree he made the right choice. Everything, every detour, every, every disappointment, everything that we, every experience we've had has been working for us this entire time. It's been working for us. We all know who Beyonce is. Are we familiar who her husband is? <laughs> Beyonce's husband, Jay-Z, probably the most famous guy in hip hop right now. It's very fun, funny for me to say that because y'all may not know the story, but I was there for all of it. He was not our favorite at first. Oh, no, no. Jay-Z had at least three other names that were ahead of him who we favored most. Let's not forget that his career began when Tupac was still alive. That's already a reason to quit. Then you had Biggie. Then you had Nas. Then you had Wu-Tang Clan. There were names that were so much bigger than Jay-Z. He could have easily said, all right, let me give this up. Look at him now. Let us not forget this is a poor kid from the projects. So poor that he didn't have time to write things down when he wanted to write rhymes. He had to keep them all in his head. Every single song, every single album that you've heard this man do, he went into the booth and just started speaking and letting God speak through him. It happened to rhyme and he has made masterpieces from that. Now he could have taken the fact that he didn't even have a pad of paper to write his rhymes on when he was a, a starving kid in the projects. He could have taken that as a reason to say, why me bring on the victim consciousness? He did not. It only groomed him to be one of the greatest MCs ever. Are you not hearing me? Are you not hearing me? I want you to think about the pain. Think about the people who have disappointed you. Think about the people you are angry at right now and in your mind, thank them because look how beautiful you are. And if you can't, I am looking for you. I'm looking at every one of you. I thank every experience you have had thus far. Look at how awesome you are. Look, look at how awesome you are. Oh my God. 
Thank you for those disappointments. Thank you for those unanswered prayers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm only saying this because when I am dealing with it, when I am in the funk, I'm going to need all of you to remind me. No, I'm not going to like it at all, but I will appreciate it. Nothing in this world is happening to you. It is always happening for you. Unity San Jose, thank you for an awesome Sunday, an awesome service, an awesome experience. Thank you for taking this journey with me. I am humbled to be here. I am so glad that we are family and thank you for inviting me into this home. Namaste. Join me in a moment of meditation. Let's just bring ourselves fully present. Bring in the joy of the music and that feeling tone of Margot's singing just into our heart space right now. So I'd like us to picture energy, the energy of our heart right now, visualizing that perhaps as a ball of light in our mind's eye and whatever colors you want to bring into that energy, whatever feeling tones and emotions you want to bring into that heart space, do so now. And let's picture anything that's weighing on your heart or weighing on your mind, any energies that are not needed right now. Let's just, you can visually picture those energies moving away you can actually even take your hands and if you want to imagine yourself just taking the energy that may appear as other balls of light that are dim, that are not the true heart energy of you, any situation that just comes up, just treat it as a ball of light that just moves right out of your space and just use your hands if you want to, to just gently Push that away as it fades and you focus on the true energies of yourself. Any areas of concern that could be a, a relationship with a person, something in your vocation, something you're carrying in your body, just anything that's not cooperative energy, let's just picture that as a ball of light that we just gently move out, move out with our hands until it just fades and becomes smaller and smaller until it dissipates. And just continue doing that if any energies move into your space that are not cooperative. Gently. And let's focus again on the energy that's in the center of your space, which is your growing, brilliant heart energy. And now let's invite in energies that are cooperative, energies that are based on truth principle. And so the first one of those I think of is abundance. I'm viewing this as just a large planetary type energy that's just so filled with good fortune, abundance in all things. As we bring that light and just put it right next to our heart light. Just invite that in where it's radiating. And as you breathe, 
from the heart space, also maybe picture any cooperative energies that you'd like to bring in, such as angels, any animal spirits, any the energies of any transcendent masters, teachers, the energy of Christ consciousness, all protective energies, and just invite those as perhaps to be stars in this space and breathe into that. Just relaxing your shoulders into this space as it fills with cooperative energy as we now bring in healing and wholeness. Noticing what color that is how it's radiating and how it's so cooperative with this abundance energy. The light, the radiant healing light of healing and wholeness. And maybe matching with that energy, let's bring also bring in peace, the light of peace that might appear as another large sphere in your space, along with your heart space, along with the space of abundance, along with the, the sphere of wholeness and healing. Let's bring that peace ball of energy into our sphere, into our, into our environment. And so anything else you'd like to bring in, whether it's power, authenticity, divine order. Trust. Protection, grace, guidance. Wisdom. Joy. And just see those energies painted upon this mosaic or this starscape of your own making. Inviting in those energies, allowing them to radiate. And breathing. And now picture your heart space. connecting with any one of these energies, knowing that all of these energies are divine. They're all emanations of the one power and the one presence. They're all emanations of you, as you, through you. And you just invite them as you relax your hands and relax your shoulders and Feel yourself grounded. And so as we go into the silence for a moment, let's just think of the beauty and the appreciation that we have for any one of these energies. And now let's imagine all of these positive energies just coming together into a single star that's radiating 
to seeing yourself as that star. Seeing the God of your understanding as that star. And maybe inviting in the backdrop all the other stars that represent all the people of this planet, all the life forms. And they are all part of the same light. So knowing that as we end this meditation, that those lights are continuing to shine day and night, healing, abundance, power, truth, clarity, wisdom, love, understanding, joy, expansion, authenticity, and you. For all this, I give great thanks. And I say, and so it is. Coming back into this space, taking a deep breath, 